DHH recently tweeted that uh, we should be using PJAX. So in this episode, we are going to discuss uh, how to use PJAX to make the site uh, faster with the least amount of effort. Here I have a very simple site. All uh, the site offers is that you click on the tabs at the top and the right content comes up. That's it. It's a very, very simple website. As we click from tab to tab, what's happening is that every single time the server is sending the full layout, the browser has to parse the, the JavaScripts and also the CSS, which is not really needed in this case because when I move from tab features to tab roadmap, there are only three things I'm interested in. Obviously, when I go to a new tab, I need to see the new content. I want the new URL. And lastly, I want the new title. So these are the three things I'm interested in. And this is exactly where push state comes into picture. Here is the API for push state. And if you look at the API, the very first parameter to push state is a JSON object. And in this episode, we are not going to discuss about that. I would cover that in the next episode. The second parameter is the title of the title of the new page. And the third parameter is obviously the link that should be shown on the new page. So what push state is doing is that it is letting us do Ajax kind of behavior without repainting the whole page. This push state concept will become much clearer once we implement push state in this website. So let's go ahead and start implementing push state to our website. Here I am in my project directory and all I need is jquery.pjax, that JavaScript file, and I'm going to execute this curl statement to download that JavaScript file. So now that I have that JavaScript file in the vendor directory, let's go ahead and make the necessary code change. Here I'm at the gem file and the very first thing I need to do is to use the gem rack pjax. Next, I need to require the jquery.pjax, the JavaScript file that we downloaded. And now I need to say to the application that for all the links, use pjax. And that can be done like this. Here I am saying that all the links should use pjax. Next, uh, let's go to the layout file. And here I need to add a div tag. Div data pjax container. And the very last thing we need to do is go to application.rb file and use the middleware. And that's all. We are done at this point of time. Off the camera, I did the bundle install. I pushed it to GitHub. And this is the diff I'm seeing in GitHub. Here I added a line to gem file. I added two lines to application.js. Added two lines to the layout and one line to application.rb. I pushed it to Heroku to a different URL so that we can see the difference between the first uh, site which is not using pjax and the second site which is using the pjax. So this is our site with uh, pjax as the name suggests and if I move from tab to tab the content is loaded much faster and we can also verify that it is indeed using pjax by looking at um, the network. So here I am on features. If I click on roadmap, I get this uh, get request. If I click on it, I see that the response has just the title, not the full layout, no application.js file, no application.css file, and the content. So this is pjax in action. So think about it. With just seven lines of change, we have made our page much, much faster here. 
Uh, so this is the power of uh, push state. Of course, push state is not being supported by all the browsers. So first, let's look at the browsers which support push state. As of now, this is the state of push state support across the browsers. IE 10 will be supporting it. Right now, Firefox supports it, Chrome supports it, and Safari has partial support for it. So the obvious question is, what will happen if my page, which is peach action enabled, is viewed in say IE. So in that case, it will go back to the traditional style. And the traditional style is the first one which does the full rendering every single time. So this is a nice mechanism where it automatically falls back to the traditional style in case the browser is not supporting push state. There is one more issue with uh, PJAX and that is since the page is loaded only once and as you move from tab to tab the, the full JavaScript code is not loaded so your document ready code will not get executed. When we write jQuery code time and again we make use of document ready callback and that is not going to work in this case. So how to get around to that problem and some other tricks I'm going to cover in the next episode. Before I close this episode, I just want to discuss very briefly what Rack PJAX and the jQuery PJAX do behind the scene. This is jQuery uh, PJAX code, which is responsible for doing all the push state, replace the state, and all those kinds of trickery things. We don't need to worry about it, but we need to be aware of what it is doing behind the scene to get around to some of the things uh, like document ready issue which we discussed. So in the case of uh, PJAX it makes a request to the um, server with a particular timeout so it's making an AJAX request and I think the default is 600 milliseconds and it also sets the request header as X PJAX so that you can do some processing based on request header. However, the more interesting part is to see Rack PJAX. So in the case of Rack PJAX, it's a very simple uh, library with just 44 lines of code. And what it does is that it uses HPRECOT to see in the layout where is data PJAX container. So it throws away everything above data PJAX container and only takes the content starting from data pjx container and adds it to the new body. Before that, it also picks up the title from the layout. And the final result of that is when we move from tab to tab, we, in the response, we see the title and the new body. That's all for this episode. Thank you for watching.